So we'll also talk about mathematical functions, characters, and strings. So basically, we'll start with what a function is. Uh, remember the main method. The main method had the signature that said public, static, void, main, string, array, args. What does static mean? It basically, it means that all inputs will be pro provided as parameters, that this method, main, takes everything that it needs from the arguments, and then it may read something from the command prompt, but it doesn't return anything. These are basically all the inputs are either provided as parameters or read from somewhere, command prompt or a file and so on. It associates the method, this method, this function with the class itself. So the method is not called for a particular object of that class. In the same time, you can think about this method as being a method that takes all the inputs as arguments. So it's you can invoke this method either from the current class or you can invoke it from an outside class with prefixed uh, the name of the class, like math.sinus. Math is a class that actually is in uh, Java and you can call the method sinus, cosinus, uh, and many other methods that we'll discuss about today. So there are many methods that are in this math class, and they are very useful if you are doing any kind of mathematical computation. Trigonometric uh, mesh methods, exponent methods, rounding methods uh, with different precision. Sometimes you round to an integer, sometimes you round to another double or, re or real number, but with a uh, better uh, with a less precision like you drop all digits after the let's say the second digit after the decimal point then there are overloaded methods minimum maximum that if you pass two integers it will return the minimum of the two if you pass, pass two doubles it will return the minimum of the two as a double and so on this is called overloading if the same name but is used with different arguments, it returns different results in different types. Random is another function in math that generates a random number, a random double between zero included and one not included. So it randomly returns a number. Now, it's not quite random. So basically a computer is like a deterministic device. Uh, it needs inputs. There are no kind of random uh, features that can be taken into consideration. So usually what happens with this random, it takes either uh, the color of a pixel on the screen or it listens to the local area network and whatever message it's, it's, it's getting, it applies a hash function to it and it returns a pseudo random value. So basically, these are really pseudo random values computed based on functions from multiple inputs. Also, it contains constants. So the value of pi, the value of e, they are basically defined with final static and then double uh, in the case of pi and of e. So we'll start with trigonometric methods sinus, cosinus, tangenta, a cosinus, a sinus, a tangenta. It takes a double radiance as the input. So for instance, math.sinus of zero, we return zero. Math.sinus of math.pi divided by six is 0 0.5. Math.sinus of math.pi divided by two, it returns one. So this is about 90, is 90 degrees. Uh, pi corresponds to 180 degrees. So basically you are, you are getting for math.pi divided by two, one, and for zero, you get zero. Cosinus works as follows. Math.cosinus of zero is one and math.cosinus of math.pi divided by two returns zero. So it takes the radians and returns the trigonometric values for those radians, sinus, cosinus, tangenta. A. Then exponent methods. Exponent methods, basically they raise to the power. So for instance, if you just pass a double, it raises e to the power of that double. So for instance, math.exponent of uh, one returns approximately 2.71. Logarithm 
it does logarithm in a base, in natural base. So basically logarithm of 2.71 returns 1.0. Power takes two arguments, the base and the power. So for instance, if you want to compute two to the power three, you would invoke math.power of two and three. It returns 8.0. Math.power of three and two is three to the power two, which is 9.0. You can also pass reals. So really it always takes reals as doubles, but if you pass integers, it converts those integers to, to doubles and then computes the power. Square root returns the square root of uh, the double number. So square root of four is 2.0, square root of 10.5 is 3.24 and so on. Next, there are the rounding methods. So sealing or seal of a double X returns X rounded to the, uh, up to the nearest integer. This integer is written also as a double value. So for instance, sealing of uh, 2.3 is going to be 3.0. The nearest integer uh, that is greater than equal with uh, 2.3 in this case is 3.0. And because it always returns also a double, it's 3.0, not three. Floor returns the, it rounds X down to its nearest integer. So floor of uh, 2.3 is 2.0. Floor of two is 2.0. So it's basically the nearest integer. If you are really on the integer, equally close to two integers, the even one is always written. So what do I mean by that? Let me show you an example. So math.r int of 4.5 will return four and math.r int of 5.5, it returns six. So for values that are equally distance between two integers, the even one is preferred. This is a standard again for rounding in uh, all programming languages. In fact, uh, in, in Python, there is a difference between 2.7, Python 2.7. So in Python 2.7 round of, 4.5 would return five. And in Python three or point X, any value of X round of 4.5 would return four. But that's because at that time, Python was not implementing the standard. The standard is what we have for R int in Java is basically a standard behavior that when you are equally distance from uh, two integers, the even one is returned. In this case, as a double, because all of these methods, as you can see, double, ceiling, floor, and are in return doubles as the result of the method. Round is actually an in, uh, a method that returns an integer, which precisely is defined as math.floor, the floor method that we saw before, of x plus 0 0.5, everything cast it to an integer. So it's basically rounding up to uh, basically the, uh, actually uh, rounding down, but after you increment with 0 0.5. So it's kind of like the round that you would expect that if it's equally distance between two integers, it will prefer the uh, always the bigger one or the, 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 the bigger one, yes. And similarly, if you, if you call round for a double, it will return a long. And the reason for that is doubles are on eight bytes. So the result of round is always a long because you also need eight bytes for the integer part to transform a double always successfully to an integer. Okay. Here I have examples. So for instance, map.ceiling of 2.1 is 3.0 math.ceiling of 2.0 is 2.0, math.ceiling of minus 2.0 is minus 2.0, math.ceiling of minus 2.1 is minus 2.0 because on the real axis, 
minus 2.1 is less than 2.0, minus 2.0. Uh, math.floor of 2.1 is 2.0. Math.floor of 2.0 is 2.0. Math.floor of minus 2.0 is minus 2.0. Math.floor of minus 2.1 is 3, minus 3.0. Math dot round of 2.6 as a float is the integer 3. Uh, math dot round of 2.0 is 2. Math dot round of minus 2.0 is uh, uh, as a float is minus 2. And minus uh, uh, math dot round of minus 2.6 returns minus 3. One thing to notice about these two methods is that these are longs because basically we invoke them for doubles. Therefore, the result is a long. That was something that we basically saw before. Let's use the same. So the result for these two cases are longs because the rounding returns a long as the result, okay? Mean, max, and absolute value. So max of A and B and mean of A and B returns the maximum or the minimum between the two parameters. And they work differently for integers and doubles. So if both operands are integers, it returns an integer. If at least one of the operands is a real number, it will raise the second operand to a real number. So in the case of math.max of 2.5 and 3, it returns 3.0 because 2.5 was a double. Therefore, 3 will become 3.0 as a double. Similarly, for minimum, if both operands or one operand is a real, it will return the minimum real number between the two. If you invoke it for integers only, it will return an integer. They are called overloaded uh, functions. It returns basically the uh, type of the arguments after they uh, decide on a one single type. Okay. The absolute value is again an overloaded method. It returns the absolute value of the parameter. So absolute value of minus two is two. Absolute value of minus 2.1 is 2.1 as a double. Random returns a pseudo random double in the interval from zero included to one not included. So basically you have equal uh, probability for all double numbers between zero included and uh, basically closest number to 1.0 that can be represented as a double. So basically we have this entire range uh, of, uh, of numbers that can be returned as with equal probability. Now, in most cases, we would like a double in a specific uh, uh, interval. So for instance, we want, let's say to generate a, ra a random but not in the interval from zero to one. We would like, let's say an integer between zero and nine. So we would multiply the math.random with 10 and then cast it to an integer. That will give us random values between zero and 10, but not including 10. So basically we'll get after we cast to an integer values between zero and nine. If we want from zero to 10, then we basically will multiply with 11. So after casting, we'll basically get from zero to 10. If we want, let's say from one to 10, we can apply the second method. So we start with a minimum integer like 50, plus again, the range. So we multiply math.random with 50 and we cast it to an integer. So now it, this will give us values between 50 and 99. So now it gives you an idea. If you want between one and nine, one and 10, you all that you need to do is to add one to the result of the first expression. In general, if you want a random number with equal probability between an A and an A plus B, excluding A plus B, you would do an operation like this. A plus math.random multiply with B. One common case that always we would like to basically uh, have is when we have generate some character like from zero to nine or from uppercase A to uppercase Z or from lowercase A to lowercase Z. 
So how can we generate with this kind of met.random, a random character with equal probability in that range? And the answer is quite simple. So basically we take the character for A, we know that is an internally is an integer. We multiply math.random with the distance between the two characters that we want to represent, lowercase z and A. So basically it will give us a double between zero and the distance between the two because the distance between the two doesn't include the last character, double basically random returns between zero and uh, one, but not including one. We add one to it. So now after we drop all the types, A is an integer, we don't need to cast it to an integer. Uh, Z and A are integers, we don't need to cast them. We get one single expression, A, plus math.random multiplied with z minus a plus one, everything, because it's a double now, because of math.random, cast it to a character. This will give us a random character from a to z. You want from zero to uh, nine, you basically replace a with zero in both places and z with nine. That will generate a random digit between zero and nine, any one of the digits. So that's basically the use of random to generate a random, pseudo random, because again, uh, there are very big machines that actually do nuclear operations to get real random values, but normal computers like we have are pseudo randoms. They are collecting some information that is considered to be a random value, like you listen on the broadcast network and whatever message you're getting or the color of a pixel on the screen is considered to be a relatively random number. Plus, you apply a hash function that the result is not ex as ex expected as any function. So basically you get another mapping from a pseudo random value to another pseudo random value. But again, if you have the function that you know what to expect, so it's not quite random. In fact, I remember that there was an error and this was, is the last thing that I'm gonna tell you today. There was an error on Mac with Java when math.random will always return as the first value that you generate zero. So it's not random at all. You know exactly, first time you invoke it, it always returns zero, then it starts returning random values. So one thing that I would tell my students is run math.random semicolon just at the beginning of the program so it gets rid of that zero. So when you actually run it later, when you need it, it gives you some random value, some better random value than zero. Zero by itself is not random. That's all for today. We'll continue the rest of the math functions and strings next class. So we'll take now a short break up to the lab. And if you have any questions, I can take them now. Thank you.